effect of catechal amines on systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Catechal amines mainly act as sympathomimetics, that means they increase the sympathetic uh, stimulation. So as the sympathetic system is activated, it results in the increase in the blood pressure. But blood pressure is like the two components such as uh, systolic blood pressure as well as the diastolic blood pressure. Now these catecholamines affect which type of blood pressure? Either they increase the systolic blood pressure or diastolic blood pressure or both of these. So it depends on the type of catecholamine. For example, if we take the norepinephrine and if you see its effect on the diastolic blood pressure, norepinephrine is going to increase the diastolic blood pressure slightly whereas isoproteinol is going to decrease the diastolic blood pressure very significantly. Norepinephrine as well as isoproteinol, even both are catecholamines, they are having a quite opposite effect on the diastolic blood pressure. So now in this video, let us see how these catecholamines affect both systolic as well as diastolic blood pressures. First of all, let us see what are the catecholamines. So first one is the simple catecholamine is the dopamine and second one is the norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is having a OH group at the beta position. And third one is the epinephrine which is having a methyl group on the amine. And finally we have another catecholamine that is the isoproteinol. Isoproteinol is also called as isoprenaline. This isoproteinol is having the isopropyl group on the amine side chain. And isoproteinol is a synthetic catecholamine, whereas dopamine, norepinephrine and epinephrine are the natural catecholamines. Now let us see one by one what is the effect of these catecholamines on blood pressure. How they act? These catecholamines are going to stimulate the sympathetic system, so they act only mainly alpha receptors and beta receptors. So here the important receptors which are controlling the blood pressure include alpha 1 receptors, beta 1 receptors and beta 2 receptors. When these catecholamines act on the alpha 1 receptors, they are responsible for the vasoconstriction which increases the blood pressure. Catecholamines by acting on beta 1 receptors, they produce a cardiac stimulation which increases the cardiac output. As the cardiac output increases, again the blood pressure increases. And beta 2 receptors are responsible for the vasodilatation, particularly blood vessels supplying to the skeletal muscle and liver are dilated by beta 2 receptors. Now this vasodilatation results in a fall in the blood pressure. In this way, catecholamines can act on more than one receptors and their effect on the systolic and diastolic blood pressure depends on their relative selectivity towards the alpha 1, beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. And as alpha 1 receptors produce vasoconstriction, they mainly affect the systolic blood pressure. And beta 1 receptors which increase the cardiac output and thereby increase the blood pressure, they also mainly affect the systolic blood pressure. On the other hand, beta 2 receptors which produce a vasodilatation, they mainly affect the diastolic blood pressure. If a catecholamine is having the more alpha 1 or beta 1 action, it will have more effect on the systolic blood pressure. And if it is having a more effect on the beta 2 receptors, it will have a significant action on the diastolic blood pressure. So let us start with one of the catecholamine, norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is having a selectivity more towards the alpha receptors and it is having a little selectivity towards the beta receptors. So if we see the effect of the norepinephrine on the systolic blood pressure, suppose this is the normal systolic blood pressure that is a 120 mm of Hg. And when this norepinephrine infusion is given, then the blood pressure is markedly increased. The marked increase in the systolic blood pressure by the norepinephrine is because of its uh, alpha action. And diastolic blood pressure. Norepinephrine is mainly affecting the alpha 1 receptors. So suppose this is a normal diastolic blood pressure and because of their little effect on the beta receptors and more effect on the alpha receptors, they slightly increase the diastolic blood pressure. Again, this slight increase in this uh, diastolic blood pressure is because of the alpha action. And what about the peripheral resistance? So as uh, norepinephrine is acting like a vasoconstrictor by acting on the alpha receptors, the peripheral resistance is going to be increased. So suppose this is a normal peripheral resistance, by infusion of this norepinephrine, peripheral resistance is markedly increased. And this effect is again attributed to the alpha action. So norepinephrine increase systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure as well as the peripheral resistance all this can be attributed to its action on the alpha receptors. But norepinephrine is having the more effect on the systolic blood pressure and a less effect on the diastolic blood pressure. Now let us take the case of epinephrine. 
epinephrine is having the selectivity towards both alpha receptors as well as beta receptors. So in case of systolic blood pressure, because epinephrine is having alpha action, if this is the normal systolic blood pressure and epinephrine can increase the systolic blood pressure just like the norepinephrine. This marked increase in the systolic blood pressure is attributed to alpha action. Now in case of diastolic blood pressure, this is the normal diastolic blood pressure and by administration of the epinephrine, it slightly decreases the diastolic blood pressure. The slight decrease in the diastolic blood pressure is because of the selectivity towards the beta receptors. As epinephrine act on the beta receptors, it produces a vasodilatation which results in the fall in the blood pressure. But as epinephrine is not completely selective for the beta receptors, we can observe a slight decrease in the diastolic blood pressure and peripheral resistance. So suppose this is the normal peripheral resistance and again because of the beta action, a slight decrease in the peripheral resistance can be observed by the epinephrine. And this action can be again attributed to vasodilatory response of the epinephrine through the beta 2 receptors. And now isoprotenol. Isoprotenol is also called as isoprenaline which is a synthetic catechol amine. Isoprotenol is completely selective towards the beta receptors. So in case of systolic blood pressure, if suppose this is the normal systolic blood pressure and isoprotenol produce a very slight increase in the systolic blood pressure. The slight increase in the systolic blood pressure by isoprotenol can be attributed to its action on the beta 1 receptors which increase the cardiac output thereby increase the systolic blood pressure. But since it is not having action on the alpha receptors, increase in the systolic blood pressure is not marked, it is only a slight increase is going to be observed. Now diastolic blood pressure. Suppose this is the normal diastolic blood pressure, isoprotenol can produce a marked decrease in the diastolic blood pressure. Because isoprotenol is selective for the beta receptors and when it is acting on the beta 2 receptors, it produces a marked vasodilatation results in the significant decrease in the diastolic blood pressure. So this action can be attributed to beta 2 receptors. Finally the peripheral resistance and again this is the normal peripheral resistance and by administration of isoprotenol again a significant decrease in the peripheral resistance is going to be observed again due to the beta 2 receptors. In this way isoprotenol shows a marked effect on the diastolic blood pressure as well as the peripheral resistance because of its vasodilatory response through the beta 2 receptors and it is shows a slight increase in the systolic blood pressure because of the beta 1 action. And since it is not having alpha action, it is having a less effect on the systolic blood pressure. Finally, dopamine. Dopamine is one of a mediator within the CNS and uh, it's having the different receptor profile. Dopamine can act on the D1 as well as D2 receptors, both centrally as well as peripherally. And uh, by acting on these receptors, it produces a renal vasodilatation. So we have one of the drug, phenoldopam. Phenoldopam is used for the decrease in the blood pressure by increase the renal vasodilatation. And dopamine can also act on the beta 1 receptors which are responsible for the increased systolic blood pressure. And dopamine at a high dose can act on the alpha 1 receptors which are again further responsible for the increase in the systolic blood pressure. So in this way dopamine can act on both dopamine receptors, beta 1 receptors as well as alpha 1 receptors. At a low dose, it acts on the dopamine receptors which actually reduce in the blood pressure, particularly at the renal blood vessels. But at an intermediate dose, they mainly affect through the beta 1 receptors which increase the systolic blood pressure. And at a very high dose, they activate the alpha 1 receptors which increase the systolic blood pressure. Now the dopamine can act out through the dopamine receptors as well as the beta 1 receptors. At very high dose only, they act through the alpha 1 receptors. Now what is the effect on this systolic blood pressure? So suppose this is a normal systolic blood pressure and when dopamine is going to be administered, the systolic blood pressure is significantly increased. The significant increase in the systolic blood pressure is mainly mediated through the beta 1 receptors. And here the systolic blood pressure is not only increased by dopamine directly, dopamine can also release the norepinephrine which further increases the systolic blood pressure. So this action may be attributed to its direct action on the beta 1 receptors as well as indirectly releasing the norepinephrine which increase the systolic blood pressure. And diastolic blood pressure. Dopamine can slightly increase or having no effect on the diastolic blood pressure. So it's having very little effect and this can be attributed to again beta 1 receptors.
and here the dopamine is having no effect on the beta 2 receptor so it's having very little effect on the diastolic blood pressure and finally peripheral resistance so this is a normal peripheral resistance and dopamine can reduce the peripheral resistance very slightly and this reduction in this peripheral resistance can be again attributed to the dopamine action as we have seen dopamine produces a renal vasodilatation as well as coronary vasodilatation so dopamine can reduce the peripheral resistance now let us see the conclusion so let us see what are the different catecholamines what is their effect on the systolic blood pressure diastolic blood pressure as well as the peripheral resistance norepinephrine which is mainly act through the alpha receptors which increase the systolic blood pressure very significantly and it also increases the diastolic blood pressure but it is not significantly very little effect is observed on the diastolic blood pressure and peripheral resistance is again significantly increased big again because of the alpha action the, and the actions of the norepinephrine are mainly attributed to its action on the alpha receptors dopamine is related drug to the norepinephrine which also having a marked increase in the systolic blood pressure which because of its direct action on the beta 1 receptors as well as uh, its conversion into the norepinephrine which increases the systolic blood pressure and on the diastolic blood pressure dopamine shows again very little effect and this again can be attributed to its action on the beta 1 receptors and finally the peripheral resistance is reduced which is very slightly because of its action on the dopamine receptors which produce the renal vasodilatation dopamine acts like norepinephrine but its effect on the peripheral resistance is reversed because of uh, its action on the dopamine receptors epinephrine epinephrine is having both action on the alpha as well as beta receptors so it increases the systolic blood pressure but not markedly at a moderate level it increases systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure is again reduced because of its action on the beta receptors and peripheral resistance is also going to be reduced again due to the beta receptors and finally isoprotonol which is more selective towards the beta receptors so it's having a little effect on the systolic blood pressure but it's having a marked effect on the diastolic blood pressure so diastolic blood pressure is uh, significantly reduced as well as peripheral resistance also significantly reduced by isoproteranol in this way if a catecholamine is having more effect on the alpha receptors it affects the systolic blood pressure and if it's having the more effect on the beta receptors it affects the diastolic blood pressure and the peripheral resistance depends on whether the drug is having more effect on alpha or beta so if a drug is having more effect on the alpha like norepinephrine peripheral resistance is increased and if a drug is having the more effect on the beta like isoprotonol peripheral resistance is going to be decreased this is the effect of this catecholamines on the systolic as well as diastolic blood pressures